Hey, Trey, I was just one of the curious. You guys, as a defensive unit, have 13 interceptions this season. Uh, seven last year and six two years ago, you've equaled that. Just talk about the pride in, in getting so many takeaways and, and how this uh, defensive secondary continues to evolve in that aspect. We take a lot of pride in that, just knowing that that was a, a point, I mean, as a, as a defense as a whole, that we needed to improve on. And it's a part of our bottom line, which we, we, we pride ourselves on playing to each and every snap. Um, we always say takeaways equals, equals victory. So especially on the back end, we've made sure that we've been you know, working hard in practice and priding ourselves on taking advantage of, of those opportunities that present themselves in the game. Um, just, just making sure we capitalize on those to you know, help out our team, help out our, help out our defense. All right, your next question is going to come from Barry Trammell. Barry, go ahead. Yeah, Trey, second straight game you guys are going to be down in Arlington. Um, it's become your home away from home. How much do you guys enjoy playing down there? What do you like about it? And what makes it such a unique experience to play in? We enjoy it a lot, you know what I mean, with the, with the Big 12 being down there every year. Um, with us, I mean, uh, having the opportunity to play in that, in that game, for consecutive years, it's something that we just, we just enjoy, and, and the, the main thing is just the environment. Um, you know, I mean, that's one of the the you know, I mean, the, the best stadiums in in the NFL. So you know, I mean, being able to play play in that stadium a, a, as a college team is something that I mean that you love to experience and, and love to have op the opportunity for. So just being able to go back there again to close out this season is something that's exciting. You know what I mean? Just being able to be back uh, on that field, back in that environment, is just something exciting that we're all looking forward to. Next question is going to come from John Hoover. John, go ahead. Hey, Trey. I uh, want to ask about Trey Brown. He opting out, uh, take, taking his first steps kind of in the NFL process. It's going to be your first game then without him. I mean, we're talking, well, we always talked about the two trays. You know, you guys came in together. You actually broke in together in that Oklahoma State game. Um, what's that going to be like not having him on the other side there? Oh, I'm definitely going to miss him, but um, for me, like I said, as you just mentioned, we came in together, and me and him uh, are very close. I mean, especially throughout these four years, we've grown closer. I mean, just our, our bond together is great. Um, so, I mean, all in all, I'm just very happy for him, very excited for him. I mean, that's a lifelong dream as, as a college athlete is to take that step to the next level. And, uh, you know what I mean, the opportunity has presented himself, uh, presented itself to him. And like I said, I'm just, I'm just excited and happy for him. Of course, I'm going to miss him, you know what I mean, wish he was out there to finish out this last game. But you know I mean, like I said, I, most, most importantly, I'm excited and happy for him. He deserves it all. Like I said, all, all the perseverance and everything that he's had to go, uh, go through these four years here, he deserves it all. So like I said, I, I'm happy for him, excited to see where the future takes him. All right, the next question is gonna come from Ryan Aber. Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, Trey, it seems like you, been uh, been in the right place at the right time a lot uh, this year as far as interceptions, uh, things like that. How has that developed uh, for you this season? And did did any of that come from some of the things that you learned during your time uh, away from with injury? Um, I think it definitely does. Just last year, being able to become more of a student of the game just – you know, I mean, not physically being able to be out there with my teammates, but making sure that every meeting that I, I stay dialed in, and um, you know, I mean, prop, props to our coaches and, and my teammates as well. You know, what I mean, we just, like I said, we pride ourselves on playing to the bottom line, and um, you know, I mean, as, as our defense, and it's just something that, I mean, uh, make sure I get lined up, I mean, get the call, and just trust my technique and trust my rules, and I mean, I, I always tell myself if I, if I, you know, I do my job within the defense, that the plays will come and. And the opportunities will present themselves, and when the opportunity presents itself, I just have to capitalize on them, and that, that's just been the, the main thing that I've been priding myself on, just doing my job within the defense, and then when the opportunities present themselves, just making the most out of them. All right, your next question is going to come from Kerry Murdoch. Kerry, go ahead with your question. Trey, I remember last year seeing you out there, uh, you know, just at practices, walking around, not back yet. Uh, to have to kind of go watch that secondary go through what they went through a year ago, to having a similar uh, opportunity this year against Florida, 
Uh, what would it kind of mean to the team to, to, to show that, you know, you lose Trey, but you got some young guys in DJ and, and Woody that are playing well. What does it mean to show kind of where the secondary has come this year against Florida? I mean, it means a lot just to show that the growth that we've, we've grown over the two years. And I mean, and most importantly, not just, I mean, us individually on the back end, but our defense as a whole, we've just grown so much. And um, like I said, of course, you know, you know we're going to miss Trey, um, you know what I mean, a lot. Um, but like I said, we, we have, as you just mentioned, Woody and DJ and those guys. And I mean, it presents them with an opportunity, which I know they're all ready for. And so, you know what I mean? It, it's going to be fun and exciting. You know I mean, we're playing against a, a great Florida team. So we're just going to make sure that, we, you know I mean, like I said, we play to our standard, play to, play to our bottom line, just go out there, you know what I mean? Uh, and just let loose uh, next Wednesday. All right, Trey, your next question is going to come from Lee Benson. Go ahead, Lee. Hey, Trey, uh, a little bit of a follow-up on what Ryan asked you a little bit ago, uh, just about your development. And um, to me, since you've been on, uh, been playing since 2017, you're one of the you know, more football-savvy players in the secondary. It seems like your, your, your coverage is usually pretty tight. Um, you know, I, for example, I'm, I'm not even sure what coverage you all were playing on that the interception you had on that play, but you found yourself to be in, in the right spot to, to make that play in the Big 12 title game. So um, is that just something that you've always kind of had, just that, that football savviness mentality, if you will? Or uh, is it something that you can be uh, taught? Uh, and also, just a bit of a follow-up on Kerry's question, going up against a, a Florida team that's going to throw it around a lot, how, how fun does that sound to play against teams like that, you know, being a player in the secondary? Just to answer the, the question about, about Florida first, uh, it's going to be very fun. You know what I mean? As a DB, you have to love that. A team that throws the ball, you know what I mean? Like you said, throw, throws it a lot. Because that, that's going to present ourselves um, with more opportunities on the back end to make those plays. I mean, the the, the pass breakups, and you know what I mean, most importantly, the ones that we love are, are the interceptions. And um, just the answer to, answer to your first question, it's something that, um, you know I mean, it, it comes from a film study and just – just like I said, trusting my job, doing my job, and then at the end of the day, just just playing ball and, and being hungry to make plays, and that's something that I, I've prided myself on um, throughout. I mean, my, my playing career, and just I mean, I, I think playing offense in high school that helps out a lot too. Just you know and I mean, ha having a knack for the ball, and just you know and I mean, I always wanting to be around the ball. But it, it, the, the the main thing is just doing my job. I mean, trusting the call, trusting the technique, and like I said, when the opportunity presents itself. I just try to make the most out of each and every one that I get. Next question is going to come from Keegan Raynaud. Keegan, go ahead. Yeah, Trey, just with the way that you guys were able to play um, in the secondary in the Big 12 championship game, I asked Lincoln and Alex this after the game. Whenever they say turnovers equal victory or takeaways equal victory, I don't, I don't know. It just, it seemed like something so simple, right? The, it, it maybe not seemed like it was the, you know, mindset, culture, this and that, but it's worked out for you guys the last five games, 11 takeaways, meeting your two takeaway. What do you think's been the biggest, you know, cause of that? Is it just the strain of the football, the bottom line that you talk about, or is there, is there something else that goes into that? I, I think you just, you just hit it on the head. That, uh, that's the main thing that contributes to that is the bottom line, which is strain to the ball, playing together and out physically our opponent. And like I said, the, the last point is takeaways equal victories. But to lead to those takeaways, we have to get lined up I and mean, get the calls and then, you know I mean, fly to the ball. Every, all, all 11 players on the, I mean, on the defense have to be eager to make a play. And then, I mean, the, everybody playing hard and straight into the ball, that, that results in the opportunities, you know what I mean, for, I mean, the offense, you know I mean, creating them, uh, creating mistakes, you know what I mean, uh, getting pressure on there, our D line getting pressure on them, you know what I mean, forcing the quarterback to to make bad decisions or you know what I mean, uh, mess up the timing within you know what I mean, the the quarterback and the receiver. So I think it all ties in together, but it all comes back to the bottom line because without straining to the ball and doing, I mean, the rest of those bullet points on the bottom line, um, I, I feel like you know what I mean, we, we wouldn't make those plays that we've been making. All right, Trey, your next question is going to come from John Hoover. John, go ahead. Trey, uh, Oklahoma last year got a chance to, to show kind of how much the defense under Alex Grinch had, had grown, you know, against the best offense in the SEC. And obviously that didn't go well for various circumstances. De Delarian was out, for instance. You were out all season. 
But you guys get a chance to show that again this year in the bowl game. Best offense in the SEC, Heisman contending quarterback. What would you say is different about this year's game than what you guys faced last year uh, from your perspective? Not necessarily Florida or LSU, but from your perspective. I just feel like from from last year to this year, we, we've grown as a defense. And um, I feel like, you know what I mean, we, we've all just bought in. I mean, from the from the first guy to the last guy on the defense, we all just bought in to, to playing to our standard and – um, no, no matter who we go, who we go against, and I mean, whatever the circumstances is, whatever the situation is, we're gonna always make sure we play our game and play to the bottom line. And I feel like that's just the main thing. You can tell all the living guys that are on the field at whatever point in the game, um, they're all bought into to playing to the bottom line. You know what I mean? And I just feel like that's just the biggest thing, just the mindset and the mentality, and uh, and the want to each and every snap to go out there and I mean, uh, strain to the ball, play hard, and then and make those plays and they present themselves. All right, Trey, you got another question as a follow-up from Lee Benson. Go ahead, Lee. Hey, Trey, I'm just curious, uh, with, with Trey Brown unavailable for this game, um, obviously you've had experience in the past playing corner. Uh, I know that you got Woody and DJ and, and Jaden perfectly capable of playing, you know, with, with Trey being being out. But I'm just curious if, if you have any thoughts or if Coach Grinch or Coach Manning has asked you or talked to you at all about maybe playing a little bit of corner uh, upcoming in this game. It hasn't been discussed yet. I mean, if they, I mean, if they ask me, I'm always open to it. I'm, I'm always, a, you know, I mean, do what's best for the team kind of guy. I mean, and, and for this defense. So, like I said, it hasn't, it hasn't came up yet. They haven't asked me, haven't heard anything about it. But I mean, if that comes up, like I said, I'm always willing and open to do that. You know, I mean, go out there, play hard. You know, I mean, like I said, play to that standard, play to the bottom line. Um, you know, I mean, for, for the, for this team and for the defense. If you have a question for Trey, we have just a couple more minutes. Raise your hand and we'll get to you. And we do have a couple more to close us out. We're going to go with Carrie Murdoch next. Go ahead, Carrie. Trey, I'm just curious, um, what was your respect level for uh, Xavier Hutchinson coming out of that game? And how much did going against a receiver like that maybe help you uh, with some of the, you know, run after catch possibilities you're going to face against Florida? Um, my respect for him and, and the Iowa State team as a whole, just going to and going into that game was high. You know what I mean, but um, he, he he came out. He had a he had a really good game. You know what I mean. It, it was kind of quiet, but he had a really good game. And like I said, Iowa State they always uh, always have, have some great receivers, great tight ends. You know what I mean, as we all know. So my respect. Um, for each and every one of those players, especially, you know, I mean, the receiving core, the tight ends is it, high. I mean, they, they they came out, they competed, and they, and they played good. All right. Next question is going to come from John Hoover. Go ahead, John. So, uh, Trey, we asked a couple of uh, offensive guys about the, the national championship potential on this roster for next year. Uh, just wanted to get what you thought about that uh, as well, looking ahead to next year. Because because you saw, obviously, what, what a national championship team looks like in the playoffs the last couple of years. Right. Um, How I close th- are you guys? I feel like we're very close. You know what I mean? Um, our, our main focus is closing out this last game. You know what I mean? Finishing out strong versus Florida. But I'm very excited because um, you could just see, um, as a player, the growth that we, we've grown um, – as a, as a team, as a whole, on all three units, offense, defense, and special teams from game one to now has just been tremendous. And I feel like we're, we're still climbing, you know, and going to continue to, to just elevate and, and climb and get better. So I feel like the ceiling is still very high, and I, I'm very excited to see. All right. We Next question is going to come from Keegan Raynaud. Keegan, go ahead. Yeah, Trey, I asked Ronnie the same question. Whenever you're, you're watching the college football ranking show, you know, on Sunday, or the weeks prior, um, some of these national guys are really touting your guys' defense now, which is which has not been the case in the past. And I know it's been um, frustrating to you guys, but do you sense that? Do you sense that there's a change in terms of how you guys are talked about as a whole? And how much pride do you have being a guy that's been here through this whole thing from 2017 to now um, to kind of see the transformation of how this thing's become? I do feel like there, there's a change, and I feel like um, we've been working hard, especially these past two years, to to kind of gain, I mean, gain that respect, especially, you know I mean, as we all know, on the defensive side of the ball, 
but then just as a team as a whole, you know what I mean? Um, like I was just saying, we've just grown so much from the uh, beginning of the season to now. And, um, you know what I mean? It, it, I, I, I take a lot of pride in it, just like you said, from being here from our freshman year to now, just seeing um, the growth, especially on, on, you know what I mean, with me being on the defensive side of the ball, it, it, the growth um, from our freshman year to now has just has just been tremendous. And like I said, it's, it's very exciting each and every year because I know, like I said, it, it's only going to get better. And, uh, you know what I mean, like I said, I, I'm excited for, I mean, to see what the future holds, I mean, with this team and this defense. But, like I said, as of right now, um, I mean, we want to finish out the season strong versus Florida. But, so I definitely take a lot of pride in that. And I'm, I'm happy, you know what I mean, excited and eager to, to uh, continue to climb and get better.